Welcome to Real Talk Christian Podcast, where we drink coffee and have real conversations on faith, culture, and society. This is Mark Hyde. And Chris Fuller. And today, we are jumping back into the said, the, 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 seven deadly sins conversation. Apparently, add that to the words that I can't say very well. So, we've already done, I believe, four of them. So, this is number five, talking about envy. Fuller, are you ready? Let's, Let's go. Let's go. You know, the last What's two up, weeks, sir? What? it was me that screwed up the <laughs> intro. So I can't say nothing so anymore. now it's back to you. It's well, like dude, a, a game of okay. badminton. But, but you know how, like, when you, you get this, when you're about to start the episode and all of a sudden you're like, my throat doesn't want to, like, I, I, like, I, I got to swallow and I can't swallow. Or I have to cough yes. and I can't cough. Or you got, like, a scratch and you're like, ah. Because yeah. I have one because the coffee you made is real good and it's real thick. And we've been mm. laughing really hard <sighs> watching, like, OG TikToks. No, yeah. not OG TikToks. Vines. <laughs> vines. OG Vines. vines yeah. I, vine, yeah. Dude, I miss Vines. Uh, th- you know, they Most are. Most gorgeous thing I've ever seen are, in my life. They, it's a watermelon. <laughs> it's not a watermelon. It's a watermelon. It's a the banana. banana, banana. banana. Next to a banana, na, na, na. look at all damn chicken. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> yeah. So they're good. We keep talking about one of these days. We got to do like, uh, hey, try not to laugh. Watch the YouTube videos oh. and see what oh, we can do. We missed and make it YouTube oh. only. That'd be fun for all of our YouTube. Subscribers. You know what we missed this year, and we always talk about it, and then we forget about it until it's like, oh, it's What's already that? past Father's Day. Have like a video of us doing dad jokes and like whipping oh, out our best dad yeah. joke and doing like the. The, oh, who was it? Was it Will Ferrell like, it was, and, um, and, Mark and Mark Wahlberg? Wahlberg yep. And they're doing the Jad jokes and like the spit takes with all of it. And like, just like, if, if, or are this, I don't remember what those videos were or who did it, but they were like two guys. And you had to see who could last the longest. Right. And every time Without that you laughed, smile. you had to like tap out and the other person would come in and then they would see how long they could but, last. But you do points and low score yep. wins too. So it's like you can't crack a smile. You can't do anything. You just got to be like, can't do nothing. Just like Except just stone face. Stone cold Steve Austin. And I'm not Austin very. I'm not very good at that. I'm. I'm too. Too. Too funny and laughable of a person. Maybe. I'm. I'm. Well, no. I'm laughable because you can laugh at me really easily, right, Beth? Because that's what she's gonna say. She goes, "Yeah." She goes, "I'm the funny one." Mark's a goof. He's a dork, but I'm the funny one. Like that's that's best line. Like that's fair. On I'm the not, scale, I'm not, I don't on have the a lot scale of, jokes. of one to ten. Scale of one to ten. Okay, what are we going with this? Where Where, where do you rank in your comedy? Like, do you find yourself funny on a scale to one ten? Where, where do you find yourself on that spectrum? I would say like maybe a two or a three. I got some, I got some good signature jokes that work. I think really you're a little well. better than that. I'm I'm good on the mic on the fly, and yeah. I'm good texting. I'm I'm a funny texter because I have time to think about it and go, <laughs> and then change it <laughs> and then do something different. <laughs> what, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> but like, dude, when it comes to clapbacks, I just dude. Okay, like there's so many times. All the dang time. Let's just be honest, Beth. All the time. Or, like, I'll actually make a funny, is what we call it. I'll make a funny, and then Beth just takes it and goes, and just, like, knocks it out of the park. I'm like, can I just have one? I made a funny joke, and you topped it. Like, she always tops my stinking jokes, and it's annoying. That's why you got to do a dad joke. Yeah, but she tops those, too. Actually, no, I get eye rolls on those. Yeah, then they don't top them, see? Mm. I don't know if I talk about this in the show or not, but I had a really proud dad moment the other week, maybe the other month, I don't know, where... So I don't remember what which kid it was. It was probably probably the oldest. It was like, Dad, I'm hungry or thirsty. One, one of those things. And Sadie, out of nowhere, while, while reading a book, like out of the blue, goes, drink your spit. And I'm like, I am so what? proud of you. Drink your spit. If you're tired, just drink your spit. You never heard that before? I got told that all the time as a kid. It's like, Mom, I'm thirsty. Mom, I'm thirsty. It's like, oh, if you're thirsty, drink your spit. I'm like, <sighs> see, I just go to the... Dude, I'm thirsty. Hi, thirsty. I'm dead. Well, I do that every time, you know, too. That's, that's I do that every time, too. But if it's answer. like, no, but like I'm thirsty, I'm like, well, then drink your spit. And then like out of nowhere, say from like a bad corner of the place, you just hear, drink your spit. And I'm like, that was amazing. Wow. And then, then, then same day, someone else was like, Dad, I'm hungry. I want snack time. You hear, eat your spit. And I'm like, I, man, okay. <laughs> I've never heard that before. <laughs> drink, your, like, drink your spit if you're thirsty? No. Well, let us know. How about this in the Facebook group? Never let us know it. if you've heard that before. Back me up because I say a lot of things that apparently I think a lot of people say, but it's only like me. Oh, like yeah. I say Papa Squat all the time. No, I've heard that Papa Squat. Yeah, I say that one a lot. Usually you smack the seat and you go Papa Squat. I, I apparently um, say a lot of terminology that are sports related that my kids have no idea what I'm saying. Like like we were leaving for soccer. I'm like, all right, guys, lace up. Let's go. And lace up. <laughs> now, a couple of them knew what I was talking about, but the ones where it's like you have to like speak so plainly that it's 
like annoyingly playing. Lace up your like, shoes. What? Put your shin guards in. Saddle up sa- your horses. We got a trail. It? That's Stephen Curtis. There Chapman. you go, Come baby. On. I was wondering if you're going to get your. Get we your got a trail tonight. to blaze. Whoa. But so, anywho, but, but, yeah. but with the Bingo. dad jokes, you know, I, I got a couple standard classic ones. Um, and I'm really funny on the mic in front of people because I can do really quick witted things. So like it, on a mic, so I can hit it fast and go. It depends on my day and how tired I am. Yeah, like right I now, I got a, I got a split hand. Like it actually splits my forehead. I should have taken. Oh, I had that last week, man. It's terrible. Well, we got to leave upstairs. So after this, that's true. I'll get some time after some, that. Grab some. But we do need so, to do some funny stuff because we talk about it all the time. But right now, we're getting ready for Revive Fest because it, it hasn't happened yet. And you keep getting. The, I mean, it's already passed. We didn't talk about it. But you got like swag bags. You got custom T-shirts over there. I know. I got to start putting everything together. Um, you got like a whole commentary, like Bible yeah, commentary the, the series. Big, the big give, the study giveaway. You got the big new Grudem. Like that's the new the, updated the new, version. The new updated, yeah, because I got the old school one. A bunch of Bibles in Christ alone, which we'll be talking about next week on the podcast. What Christ alone means in and what does that Christ that alone. look like? But we have a lot of good stuff happening for Revive Fest. Yeah. Um. To be honest with you, I'm having trouble even just keeping up with the album or the the album, <laughs> the the, the, the episode artwork. Because I'm just like, man, yeah. life is flying by fast. For whatever reason, man, like the past six months, it's just been really hard to get focused. I don't if is. Is it the same for you? Um, no, not like, get focused. Like, I'm it's talking just... about like not with. There's so much going on in life. It's hard to stay focused on like certain aspects of the podcast. Like I used to be like two, three episodes written ahead and like on it. Like we we'd finish recording, I'd load everything yeah. up and have it all ready to go. Or, or that, a lot that of times night. you and I would just have blank. We we would have episode titles with no notes, right. just like episodes. Like here's my here's there one couple that I'm working on. Right. Yep. And now it's like, oh, crap, it's Thursday night. It's like, (laughs) (laughs) yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, no, no, it's not so much focusing with the podcast as it is, you know, keeping up with Lennox is really hard and trying to keep up with all the kids' schedules and its summer schedule, which means Beth is... Beth is taxi cabbing the tar out of our family right now. She's rocking it. But, you know, a mixture of all that with the kids and work has been ridiculous, which has been good. It's It's been a good problem. It's just... We can complain about how busy we are, and we gotta keep the main thing the main thing. Beth and I, we, and I'm not sure. Maybe we will talk about this in some episode about how to how to fight the hustle culture a little bit. And so Beth and I are trying really hard to fight the hustle culture of like mm. go 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 go, be involved in all these different things, and you're running from four different sport practices over the course of one night. Like I know families do that. We just got a butt ton of kids. Like that's really what it comes down to. Sure. Like one little event to the zoo takes a plan. Like you don't just go to the zoo with us anymore. Well, of Lennox. Yeah. Right, right. No, you got to plan feeding you times and everything. plan yeah. every little so. detail. So, but Beth keeps up with it, and it's awesome. But, you know, we got Revive Fest coming up yeah. around the yep. corner. We have season five. Five? Holy cow. Season five We got to figure out to make sure we have a good launch for se- season five. So we're ready for it with some new artwork. And yeah. I don't think I don't think we need new intro music. No, I don't think so. I think the intro music. And we got a lot of good topics. We got a lot of interviews that we're trying to figure out and line up. So we got some good things coming for season five, but you know, season five is right around the corner. We've been growing our Facebook community. Like you guys have been crushing it. We almost got a thousand people over there. You said we have like a thousand on YouTube. Uh, We're like 890 on YouTube subscribers. And then we got what fourteen hundred in Instagram. Yep, uh, four, so, yeah. over fourteen hundred. Instagram. The family's growing. The family's growing, and, and you guys are downloading. You guys are engaging, which is absolutely awesome. And we want to keep those conversations going on over in the Facebook group. But before we jump into the episode, before we get into all about the seven deadly sins of envy, and get back into that little series, we got to talk about what we're drinking tonight, dude, because this is so, something different that we haven't had on the show yet. So right? this is well, no, we haven't had this yet. So this is the Tacoa coffee roaster again here uh local mm-hmm. to mishawaka mm-hmm. but it, this is the their um they make this blend especially for a little coffee shop here in town called the heritage meeting house and so oh, oh, I, didn't, the, oh I didn't make that connection this was actually specifically made for that coffee shop 100 percent. i didn't catch so this that is, this is what they serve at the coffee shop this for is for some coffee. reason my brain did not connect those two dots okay yeah, so this is the heritage meeting house blend this is the coffee shop's blend gotcha that, so when you that go is not to sol- the, it's not sold in the tacoa store it's made for the coffee it's shop. it's made for this specific coffee shop only and so it's a blend so what are we talking here are we talking like mainly south like south american blend it's are we talking lot, yeah it's like a it's like a guatemalan mexican and i think Peruvian, but but, but, but we were looking at the at the flavor notes. It's full body it and full dark body. rose, yep. which means stupid thick. Yep, <laughs> it's really it's good. good. It's a good slap you in the face with a cup. Good. 
Which side note? Can can people actually? I'm, I'm like I'm not trying to sell it or anything yeah, like that. Are. But are you? Well, I don't, I mean I don't have any stake in the game yet. Um, does Tacoa? Can you purchase it online? Yes, you can. Actually, if you go to our show notes for the past few weeks, oh, have you been you're gonna you're gonna see notes? the link to Tacoa in people the show notes. People have been getting some free advertisement from the Fuller. Yeah, you got to throw up one that's good coffee. You know, you don't call. Yeah. We haven't had Bendix in a while. Bendix is another coffee that's here yep. locally. So it's a Tacoa coffee. Oh, yeah, you can get some single. Oh, yeah, single, single or, so origin. I last week I was gonna have the Brazilian, which was the very top one. That one right there was one we were gonna drink. No, that was the last time we did the pour over that you brought. Oh, yep. That mm-hmm. was in the coffee pot. So I drank that the next day, and that's really good. It's not the most expensive coffee in no, the world, but no, it's, it's definitely it's, not the cheapest either. No, it's it's probably about the same, right around the price range we normally buy. Yeah, I would say it's pretty standard, 15 bucks for 12 ounces. Yeah, yep. yeah. So it's good stuff, though. Oh, they are hiring, by the way. They are. They if you are. want a job, you can and come they hang have out coff- they have coffee subscriptions. Ooh, kind of like uh, our old coffee yeah. sponsor. Yeah. Um, Brew it brew forward. forward. Brew it yeah. forward. Good yeah. old go to brew it forward. Well, man, oh, so we got to read a couple of reviews to read. We here do. For this and, one. and you know what? I'm going to give you a if break. If people to... feel like this is forced, we're tired. We're, we're tired. <laughs> it's been a long week. We didn't even and... record last week because. No, it was so bad last week. I, yeah. I texted you and said, hey, I, I need a night just to chill. I will say, can we just blame Sabrina and the Canadians for this fires that are killing my yeah, lungs right now? That's what it is. It's the air quality sucks. But to be honest no. with you, though, I'm feeling it. No, yeah, it's like, heavy. I'm feeling it's, the heaviness. The air is thick it's down heavy. here. It's like when you get too close to a campfire and you're breathing in the smoke constantly. That might be a little level is. of what it is, to be honest it's 100%, with you. Now that I'm thinking so, about it. So, yeah, Nothing to do with not, the fact that we're over-caffeinated and, and we have low sleep. Over-caffeinated, underslept. Right. Under, under sloping. Un, under sloping. Under sloping. <laughs> under, under sloping. What am I alone? <laughs> 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 All right, so I, we actually have two reviews I'm going to read Ooh. tonight. Ooh. And that was because the first reveal reveal review is so We're short. We're professionals, guys. Wow. Thankfully, you love Real us. Real talk. <laughs> All right. So the first one says is from Ball Catches. Ball Catches. With a Z. And it says, awesome entertaining and quality content that's all it said ball catchers what does that mean ball catchers like back scratches yeah but like <laughs> what what what's that from family guy <laughs> back scratches well we know fuller watching appropriate <laughs> tv it was on my old life okay <laughs> <laughs> goodness even though i will say i found a new show that is really competing with madam secretary right now but yeah you and your seal team anyways seal let's team. get to the second review because we're we, we, i don't know how you catch multiple balls at one time yeah so baseball, this one's from this one's from nate deal which oh yeah we, we know sent nate. him i think we sent him a swag bag or something like that we sent him something right which nate oh, i mean it's after revive fest but is nate coming to revive fest i thought he said he was I think he is. Anyway, maybe I don't know. It says as real as it gets. Well, Five stars. We try. We try. Looking for something to help answer those questions that you have been have been on your mind. Look no further. After listening to every episode, I can attest that these guys keep it real every step of the way. While they may not always agree on subjects, they keep the conversations loving and respectful. You know, there's a lot of comments that say even though they don't agree, even though they agree, which it's is that true. true, or is it the fact that we say that and so no, people just like we, absorb it like cosmosis, like there, they don't agree. There, there's a lot of things we. We don't see a hundred percent. We're like, yeah. I will say though, the older I get, the more we agree on. We've grown. I think we've grown. If, if you go back and listen to our early takes and season one, right to now, I think we've actually grown. Even season two. We've, we've both changed in a way where we're kind of like both meeting in the middle a little bit more. I yeah. think I feel like it's the gray. It's the grayness in our beard. I think it's mm. we're wisdom. We're getting wise. We're, we're getting wise. We're getting wise. Because what do you think, Janiel? What, what do you think, what, Ben? When I started this <laughs> podcast, I didn't have any gray hairs in my beard, and, and I, I was just and dumb now I'm little grass a fairy. You were. I was a dumb and little grass just, fairy, and uh, now I'm. I'm, a, I'm I, still, I, mean, I, I mean, I am wearing my. Now you're a grass fairy, but I am wearing our RTC sponsored <laughs> yeah, ambassador football. Cl- oh, this sleeve. My bad. <laughs> That one, RTC. Um, yeah. But so the jersey that we got from, which side note, uh, Joe and Kimberly, Missionaries to Peru, episode 40. He, dude, they're starting like a men's like team now. And they're, yeah, they're, they're sharing the gospel yeah, even more. Great. Like, dude, that, I'm so excited that support for ministry is grow. Yep. And so yep. I'm, I, I'm representing Joe and Kimberly Ferris right now on the pod with, with now, the, the jerseys from Ambassadors. But they're coming back in August. Now, you by know, the here, way. here in another 10, 10 years, maybe Mark can start that same, do us like a sister partnership ministry here in the States doing the in same thing. In 10 years? 
Yeah, when your kids are a little, like Lennox is oh, a little gotcha. older. Oh, gotcha. I'm like, bro, if I'm 40, bro. I don't know if I'll be kicking a ball much. I mean, bro. I don't even do it now because I got time. Those who can't do, teach, and you won't be able to do no more. That's so you true. might as well teach. And ECA, ECA <laughs> emailed me again about coaching. Oh, yeah. So yeah, see. But Beth said no. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. You need to wait like 10 mm. years. Let Lennox get through. Beth and I said no. It would be way too let, much. Let Lennox place. get through some things. Let him grow up a little bit. Let the other let kids grow up. Let his heart grow a little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you can maybe have some time as maybe. some of the kids go on to start their lives. You might have a little bit more free time. Maybe. No, Beth is going to start fostering again, I have a feeling. Probably. We are going to start fostering again, probably, <laughs> is what's going to happen. But our house is legally too full. Yeah. Well, it is kind of Which full. is funny. They're like, no, nah, it's too full to foster. You can't take any more babies off the street, but y'all can have your own. Okay, cool. We got eight. <laughs> like, that's that's just where we're at. But look, look, bro, you know my motto, eight and skate. <laughs> eight you and have skate. three. I know, but you are at eight, so you better just skate on through. That's man. true, man. One, now, when one falls off, you can replace and go back to eight. <laughs> you know, just... <laughs> Oh, good. When Ava grows up and moves out, then you can get another one and <laughs> start fostering again. That's <laughs> funny. Oh, dude, Eight at skate. dinner. Okay, before we jump in, this is funny. Sorry. So, so uh, at dinner time, I, I think I got the story right. Beth was, or not Beth, um, uh, Evie was saying something like, uh, we, like, we can't get rid of brother. And I'm like, what do you mean you can't get rid of brother? Like, like what, what, do you th- what do you think we're going to take it like, back wait, to wait, the store? So who are we going to get rid of? And I'm like, should we just get like, I was like, I said, like, should we just get rid of, like, Elliot or something? Like, no, El- oh, Elliot was fighting. He was like, no, you can't get rid of Lennox because I finally have a brother. And I'm like, well, we just get rid of you, too. And then you guys are just like, you're, you're cool. Wow. Like, we just have sisters. And he's like, no, don't get rid of me. Get rid of this person. And they are like, fighting who should, they should get rid of in the house. And I'm like, this just got really bad, but I got to leave. So you start, have fun, Beth. You started a fight and then booked it. <laughs> well, it's actually really flanks out. Can I walk up the store? I'm like, I uh, walked up. I'm like, Morris can get rid of Sadie and just walked out of the the dining oh, room. They were like, dude. "What?" Like it was it was a whole lot of fun. So I left Beth with a whole bunch of a mess to clean up, probably. But they do it all in good spirit. They're watching Sonic Two right now. So He's they're, like, I they're threw their best life. I threw a grenade in the in the room and said, "Bye." What height are we getting rid of? <laughs> bye. bye, bye, But oh, but either way, man. So long. when you leave us reviews on Apple Podcasts or ratings on Spotify, it helps us get into the ears of other listeners just like you. And we have some of you guys who have actually emailed us say hey i can't leave a review because i'm on spotify i don't do apple Podcasts, but i just want to let you guys know this is awesome we get dms like that text messages so we see it we hear you and honestly we do this not just for you guys but it is also nice just to know people do listen on the other side you know what i mean yeah i mean it's cool but we do it for us. I just like talking with you. It's just a good time. Well, speaking of the conversation, man, we are jumping back into the seven deadly sins. If you've seven been with deadly. us since the beginning, you know we started the seven deadly sins in oh, you even season have them listed. season two. Oh, I do got them all listed, That's right? So pretty good. It, it's funny though. We always talk about we're doing this. But what's, what's actually? <laughs> <laughs> Lussie. Oh, yeah. I that wanted, sounds dirty. Can you explain Lussie to me? <laughs> call, call the typo. Um, but so, could you imagine like if a pastor was like, all right, we're going to do this new series called this, and it's going to take us three years to get through, but there's only five messages in it. Like, that's kind of what we're doing to people right now. <laughs> well, you know, we're, we're averaging, what, about one and a quarter a year? <laughs> Basically. So, like, so far, so I was like, the thing is there's some episodes, like, okay, so what should we do? And I'm like, man, we got to finish the seven deadly series. If we can call it a series anymore, I don't even know. Event, study, eventually, right? Yeah, I guess. But but you know, so I got we 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 covered four of the deadly seven sins so far. Um, in episode eighty one, we did pride. In episode eighty nine, we Lucy. did lust. Not Lucy. I did a typo. Lust. We did lust in episode eighty nine. In episode one thirty two, we did gluttony. In one sixty four, we did greed. Sixty two. I said one sixty four, didn't I? Yeah. It's gonna be a long night, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry, be. bro. Uh, bro, can I just say we got it's all this. good, bro? <laughs> so in one sixty two, we are doing. Actually, we did greed in one sixty two, and now we are at two oh seven, and we are finally. Getting so into envy. almost a year later. <laughs> so, so if you don't know what the seven deadly sins are, or you're not familiar with it, I, I I got a little backdrop just to give you a quick like review of where we get the seven deadly sins. There's not really a Bible verse where this comes from, but it comes from the Bible. It comes from a lot of study, and I'll just read from our good old friends at GotQuestions.org because they just do things in such a concise manner where. It, I could probably spend five minutes explaining it, but they're like, I got, I got in 30 seconds. Like yeah, just, I've got two paragraphs. So yeah, just it's, solve it it's all. just good. So the seven deadly sins overarching idea is according to Catholic theology, the seven deadly sins are seven vices or negative character qualities that left unchecked will result in a host of other sins and eventually kill a person's soul. The seven deadly sins are pride, envy, gluttony, lust, anger, greed, and sloth or slothfulness. The list Laziness. was first delineated by Pope Gregory the Great in the 6th century. Thomas Aquinas... You said it, bro. 
You said six. Shut up. You did it, bro. What? That's a gold star for you today. I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. I, I, need, I, I need my round of applause pad ready to go to give myself a pat on the back. But Thomas Aquinas later expounded on the idea. In the 14th century, Dante, which this is what made it popular, wrote his epic poem, Inferno, in which pictures purgatory as having seven terraces corresponding to the seven deadly sins. And the seven deadly sins are also called the seven capital sins or the seven cardinal sins. Cardinal in this text meaning like a basic importance or extremely great. Not the this, bird. No, no, not, not, not the red bird thing. The seven deadly sins are considered to be the most basic sins that plague humanity, and the sins are most likely to beset us. Each of the seven deadly sins eventually leads to other deadly sins. And, you know, I've already said this at the top of the episode, but even though the list of seven deadly sins does not come from the Bible, we believe, even though it is Catholic theology, that it does a great job categorizing just the roots of various sins. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, when we look at the Bible, we see, you know, it's the it's the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And, like, those are kind of like the basic from, uh, what was that, First Peter? I'm not sure what passage that is. We're kind of talking about these are the three things by which a lot of other sins stem from, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. But this kind of, I would say, expounds on it and grows a little bit better into more of a context of actual, not just philosophical idea, but like actual, first these are things that we actually do. First John. First John? First John chapter, well, no, I just exited it out. I think it was chapter two. Yeah, chapter two. Oh, there you go. So, um, but I do want to say this. So the seven deadly sins, they are categorized by the Catholic church of, you know, they are seven vices, which left unchecked will result in a whole stuff in a host of other sins, which we agree with and eventually kill a person's soul. Now we, we're just going to flat out say, these are not the unforgivable sin. We did an episode on that back in like season one we or season two. We probably should revisit that. Probably vi- revisit. Can people keep bringing that up in the in yeah, the group about it? Which I think would be a great conversation to talk. There's a lot. Maybe we should do some revisit. Like call them the I revisited so. series. Yeah. Like for Ooh. like a month straight, we do like re- a whole visit se- a whole series of revisit. Yeah. Like for a solid month, we re- re- how about maybe should we ask the people which ones we should revisit? I mean, obviously, would Jesus smoke let's, weed? You know what? That one has to be let's, revisited. Let's ask it in the Facebook group. So you guys should join the Facebook group so you can ask. There you go. Liz, Liz Miles, if you're hearing me, start that thread because that would be awesome. So, but we do want to say this. All right. So they are in fact forgivable. All these sins are forgivable. And we don't believe that these sins actually like kill your soul and send you to hell. But we do believe that, you know, if left unchecked, these sins can literally and all honestly destroy your life, destroy your friendships, your marriages, your workplaces, your families, all these different things. They really could screw you up. So, Lots of damage. So today we are talking about envy, which honestly, when you think about envy, it's like, oh, I'm envious of that. Like, you know, like the Kim K. Where it's I like, desire. Mm, I, I, I want to be like that. Sure. And we don't really have a, a bad connotation with envy in our culture because it's just kind of a thing that we do. It's like, oh, I'm just so envious of that. And like, it's kind of more of like a funny I would say um, tongue in cheek expression of being envy or mm. green with envy. Mm-hmm. And, but in reality though, envy when it takes grip and hold of your life can actually cause a lot of havoc. So today we're going to talk about envy, but before we talk about it, I'm going to go pastor mode on you. All right, here we go. I'm going to tell you what we're going to talk about. Here we go. Then we're going to talk about it. And then we're going to rehash and revisit what we just told you about classic pastor sermon right there. I'll, so, s- I'll sit by in my little pew and, and listen. Pew with your coffee. Pew, 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 pew. With your coffee. So go for it, Pastor. So, so here's what we're going to talk about. All right. So we're going to talk about what is the definition of envy because we first got to define it, right? We're going to ask the question of is envy even mentioned in the Bible? And more than just as it mentioned, is envying actually a sin? And then if it is a sin, how can we combat it? All right. So, but before we even start the conversation, we go back to our roots. I got statistics. Stats. You ready for this? Let's so go. this is an article which is called Who is the Envious? Of them all. What is that based mirror, off of? Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the envious of them all? You are. Ah, oh, dang, dang it. End of episode. So, so in an article called, Who is the envious of them all? Research suggests that young adults are more envious than their elders. The young folks are more envious than the old people. The article talks about a research project done by UC San Diego. In this project, they wanted to see the difference between young adults, which primarily in their research young adult or college students and the older folk all right between both men and women and though this is a quote directly from the article and it says this envy was a common experience in in their study more than three-fourths of all study participants reported experiencing envy in the last year with slightly more women than men women being 79.4 percent and men 74.1 the experience declined with age with about 80 percent of people older than 30 ah crap that says 
Finally. Dang, finally, we make a, finally, we make a stat. So about 80% of people younger than 30 reported feeling envious in the last year. By ages 50 and over, the figure went down as 69%. Because the older you get, you probably just don't give a crap. I think that's what it comes down to. So uh, we will re- we, we'll include this article in the show notes because it is a fast, it was a fascinating read. But, you know, so according to this report, envy is something that nearly everyone deals with. And I would bet the people that said, no, I don't really deal with envy. I'm like, bro, you lying. Oh, like, yeah. Lie, lie, your pants are on fire, right? <laughs> Now, so burn and burn but, pants but so burning. according to this study, it at least shows that most people deal with envy. The young people and the old people, and generally the younger you are, the more envious you are of mm. others. So before we get into reasons of why and then how we can fight this envy that we saw all supposedly have, we first need to define it to set the ground rules for the conversation. All right. All right, let's go. So I got three, uh, four different definitions of envy for you. All right. So dictionary.com defines it as a feeling of discontent. Or covetousness with oh here we go or covetousness with regards to another's advantages, success, possessions, etc. So like wanting to be an influencer, and like, but not just being like oh it'd be cool to be an influencer, but being like oh man I really wish I could be like that so and so and be that influencer and have that and influence not just over. want it but oh that'd be cool but like, but like you desire you it. want it yeah, so bad which, right. which, which we're going to lean into that question a little bit right. of and when is it a bad thing to want something is it is it bad to just want stuff yeah. out of life or want but like a strong career? desire like you you would kill to be that person yes yes and so we'll, we'll get into that okay. so okay so marion webster defines it slightly differently where it says ready painful or resentful awareness of an advantage enjoyed by another joined with a desire to possess that same advantage. Like somebody that uh, just went to a, I don't know. I'm I'm thinking someone with like Ruth Chris. I was going to say Notre Dame football game. (laughs) Yeah, but you can get tickets for Kai Chi. What? How about this? Taylor Swift tickets. Let's get no, real. No, Someone got that some no. T-Swizzle tickets, hey. and you're pissed. Oh, I'm, I'm oh, going You're mad. Easy there, big you're guy. You're mad because they got some T-Swizzle tickets, and you didn't have that Capital One card, so you didn't get no tickets, and now you are like resentful of that person because they got to go see the Taylor Swift air tour, and you didn't. I mean, that's not me because I really don't want to o- go. I'm okay with not going. You, I'm, got, I'm you, okay. you guys can have my spot. I'm, I'm actually okay. <laughs> but, but, but people are dealing with that. Sure. Like, when they get tickets, they were so sad and mad and disappointed, and then you know it's there there's videos all over the place it's, it's wild so um here's another definition all right we get more into the the christian world right so those mm-hmm. were secular sources mm-hmm. this is more christian all right so baker's evangelical dictionary says sin of jealousy over the blessings and achievements of others all right so they're saying it's a sin the sin of jealousy over the blessings and achievements of others. So blessings mm-hmm. being things that maybe just God gave them or things where it's like that's just a blessing and they didn't earn it they just got mm-hmm. it or whatever mm-hmm. or achievements especially ready for this the spiritual enjoyment and advance of the kingdom of Christ freely and graciously dis- uh, bestowed upon mm. people. So you mean kind of like Jonah and the city of Nineveh? Yeah. Yeah, basically. Or, you know, to go into a little bit more, like like for us, like we could get a lot of resent if we are like following podcasts that started after us and they're in a grow, like in, you know, whatever, and they're just growing in leaps and bound and getting sure. millions of downloads and all these different things and accolades and right. speaking tours and books. Cool. I'm not saying we are that way, but I'm saying that would be a very easy one for us to be, you know? Oh, yeah, definitely could. Or, or in any regards, like someone who can just memorize scripture better. Or they have, they seem to have a better relationship with Jesus. Somebody could sing better. Yeah, and so you just you, you start to harbor a little bit of resentment, sure. a little bit of greed, a little bit of envy yeah. in your life Ooh. for that. And then gotquestions.org, because we got to bring this one in, because we love our friends over there. So basically, all they said, I love this definition. You ready? To want what belongs to someone else. That's envy. Yeah. Yeah. That's I, it. I mean, that's that's sums it up right there. Yep. And and so when we when we hear those definitions, that might not really throw us for a loop where it's like, oh, you know what? They got the new iPhone. What, what's wrong with wanting the new iPhone? Or, you know, all, all these Teslas are driving around, which side note, Beth has turned me back into a car person again because we've been dreaming about our bucket list and retirement plans and and all these things where both are like, at some point, we are driving a minivan and a Bavon. We want a cool car. And so, like, I'm noticing, and, and I used to be a car nut back in back in high school. And I was like, I'm noticing all the different ones. Where I'm like, oh, I know what that one costs. I know what that one costs. I know what that one costs. Oh, that'd be really dope to have this one. And you know, if that goes unchecked, I can get envious sure. of that. But again, you know, if we see that, we're like, oh, what's the really big deal with that? Where it's or it's like we see someone who has like that C-suite job, and we're like, man, I really want that. Like, I wanted that. 
I was shooting for that. I'm still going to go after him and go get it. Or someone with a large YouTube following. Cause being like you said, an influence, yeah, a big thing sure. right now, or someone that's the big thing that happens worldwide right now is uh, people want to be influencers or they want to be, you know, I want to make the, the seven figures on doing TikTok videos or whatever, you know, or, or even not as simple as like, you just want to win the employee of the month award. Cause you've been grinding that uh, work. Yeah. So you want that promotion. You want that raise. Is it a bad thing to actually be envious of those things? And we'll talk about that. So envious could be, um, jealousy would be a good name for it or, yeah. or old King Jimmy covetous mm-hmm. covetous would be another good word for it. So th- th- yeah, but but envy, envy, really passionately desiring something that doesn't belong to you or th- that somebody else has. Yep, and, and, and I think that's where we got to double down on the definition. And the Bible will talk more about it, and sure. but about what envy is. And if we, you know, just settle the definition of like, oh, it'd be really cool to have those things. That's not envy. Envy is, as a definition, it's the fact of feeling dis, uh, discontent or coverage. It's a painful or resentful awareness. Right. It's jealousy over blessings and achievements. It's to want what belongs to someone else to the point where you will do anything in your power mm. to get to that spot. Mm. And, you know, the question then is the fact of, well, what is the effects of envy? Like, does it really, is it really that bad mm-hmm. if you really want something so bad that you'll do anything to get it? And I have a quote from good old um, Basile of Caesarea from the fourth century, going back to church history a little bit here. And so this is wild. I mean, think about it. Four centuries, that would be, is that 300 the 300 something? 300. Yeah, yeah. In, in the years 300. So we're talking mm-hmm. like just. I mean, a handful of generations after Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. And he said this, he says, envy does minimal harm to others, but the primary and inerrant evil to the one who possesses it being envy for who's suffering from this distress has ever diminished the good of his neighbor Mm. for who's suffering from this distress has ever diminished the goods of his neighbor, but he has consumed himself wasting away in his distress. Mm. And so when you lean into what that definition with, with from, from Basile of Caesarea or Basil of Caesarea, um, or Basil or Basil, (laughs) a Baker street, (laughs) Basil Toff. And and so basically what he's saying is the fact of, if you are so consumed with envy, where you're doing everything you can, you literally are setting yourself up to not have joy in your life or Mm. happiness or contentment, or just honestly, just enjoying what you have right now. Right. Cause you're always so focused on what you don't have that you forget Mm. what you do have. So that you literally, as it says, you, you, you're so consumed with himself or, or he says he is so consumed with himself Mm -hmm. wasting away. Right. And he just dissolves into nothing. And so when we think about this term being green with envy and and envy and how much it can really destroy your life, you know, if we look at what the Bible has to say about what envy is and why is it such a bad Mm. thing and why does it destroy our lives, the Bible actually has a whole lot to say about this topic. Let's hear it. All right. So. Legit, man. I got like sermon notes over here. So what does the Bible say about envy? First, envy is a work of the flesh. Ooh, and what are we supposed to do with the flesh? Kill it. Yeah. Kill it. Like (laughs) legit, nail it to the sinking cross. Kill it. And so the envy is a work of the flesh. So in three different passages, one in Galatians 5, 19 through 21, which is what you what we were referencing to, yep. is the acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambitions... Ooh. dissensions, factions, and envy, Ooh. drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. And this is around that same passage of what the fruit of the spirit are and right. how you should be killing killing the the, the, the envy because it's a work of the flesh. So right. also in Romans 1, 28 to 32, it says this, and because they did not think it was worthwhile to acknowledge God, God delivered them over to their corrupt minds so that they do what is not right. They are filled with all unrighteousness, evil, greed, and wickedness. They are full of envy, murder, quarrels, deceit, and malice. They are gossip, slanders, God haters, arrogant, proud, boastful, inventors of evil, which I think is a very Mm. wild, wild phrase there, inventors of evil. Well, yeah, like killing babies, inventors of evil. No, I I, I was thinking more of like the I, I was thinking creation of like, you know, uh, of the transgender movement with, oh, yeah, with that, that one. Or, or just anything with the fact of, oh, they're not pedophiles. It's uh, whatever that new thing oh, is. Yeah, it's it's just your, it's what your orientation is bent toward. It's like, no, that's gross. It's awful. Mm-hmm. Inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, senseless, untrustworthy, unloving, and unmerciful. Although they, uh, along they know God's 
just sentence that those who practice such things deserve to die. They not only do them, but they also applaud others who practice oh, them. Oh, so you mean kind of like some of these movements that are going on right now? Well, I mean, the one thing, though, it says, although they know God's just sentence, that such practice deserves that. I think that's a very harsh word that churches need to heed. Churches that are very, and, and not just, you know, gay affirming, but any topic when it comes to, you know, like being pro-choice with abortions inside of the church, um, when it comes to money laundering, when it comes, when it to, comes to being trying a, to be this big, bad, um, when it becomes, give your tithe, like this, like I challenge you to do this, give when me it your becomes, money, we'll get, give no, you when blessings. No, it becomes like, okay, and you're affirming somebody that's in a unwed relationship with each other. Yep. Oh, that's Living together, sleeping with each other, yeah, yeah. you know, or just being completely dishonest in other different regards, or, or just a, angry, or like, abusive. I think, I think Mark Driscoll, just, right? Yep, angry. Like he knows the punishment, but like the anger, the the spitefulness, the all these things. Yeah, he was just slandering. But either way, you know, we do yeah. find though that they are full of envy. Right. So this is a description of people who are unrighteous, evil, greedy, and wicked. They are full of envy because it's right. a work of the flesh. And last one is First Peter two one through three. It says, "Therefore, rid yourself." Here you go. Rid yourself of all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all slander. Like newborn infants, desire the pure milk of the word, so that by it you may grow up into your salvation. If you have tasted that the Lord is good, so. Right off the bat, we see that envy is a work of the spirit. But mm-hmm. we also see that envy, sorry, coffee burp, envy <laughs> is closely related to coveting, mm-hmm. which is also a work of the flesh. Mm-hmm. So you see this in the 10th commandment, right? Like right. literally the 10th commandment in Exodus 2017, it says, you shall not cover your, uh, covet your neighbor's house. You should not cover covet your neighbor's wife. Try not to make a joke. And his male servant or his female servant or his ox or his donkey or anything else that is mm. your neighbor's. You shall not covet it because coveting is wanting something so bad that you'll do anything for it. And that's the same of what envy does as well. So mm-hmm. envy is closely related to coveting, which is also a work of the flesh. And you should not do it. Another one is envy actually causes people to make very poor choices. Um, I'm not going to read this whole passage from Joshua, um, Joshua 7, with with Achan after the defeat of Jericho, where he saw all these different things, and he just wanted, so he took all of it for himself, and mm-hmm. he ended up knowing, and this is the thing, too, guys, is hidden under his tent or something like it that. It wasn't bad for him to, to do this, except for the fact that God said exactly what he wanted people to do. Destroy. Because in the next one, weren't they able to, like, I mean, for, I'm just going to use this word, pillage, like the goods. Wasn't that the next city? Yeah, that they did like like. But like, this um, one, I think, because. Uh, but God flat out said that you are supposed everything. to do this, and, and and the other thing too is we see here into the 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 mind and the heart of Achan, where he said to Joshua, "It is true, I have sinned against the Lord." So he saw the 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 goodness and the gold and the the money value and the beautiful things of the city of Ai. I'm oh, sorry, the city of Jericho. That's right. where they lost the, the city of Ai. And he took it for himself as a possession. He knew it was the wrong thing to do, so he dug a hole under his tent and buried it underneath there, and it ended up costing him his life. Now, right. that's not to say but that not just him, his family, his too. His entire family, yep. which is, when you think about it, pretty wild. Now, I will say that just because you have envy, um, that doesn't always mean that people are going to stone you and your family. Like That's not <laughs> what we're trying to say. But what we're trying to say here is the fact of he wanted something. God right. said, do this. He wanted the opposite. So he went directly against God and did exactly the opposite of what God said. Right. And we know what God says and what he expects of us in his word. And sometimes we'll not do the things that God tells us to do because we're so envious. Like, right. you know, we're called to to take care of the widows and the orphans in their distress. But if we go, nah, man, I, I, I'm really liking it. I, I want that new F-250 over there, so I'm not going to give my money to the dually. I'm not going to give my money. I'm not going to give my time because I'm just going to do this to get what I want to get. Even God says, why are you building up for like, storing up for yourself treasures on earth when you're supposed to store for yourself treasures in heaven? Like there could be some practical application there, but with, with, um, Aiken specifically after the feet of Jericho and he caused them to go directly against God. Also Cain, you know, the older brother of Abel legit killed Abel out of envy because God looked with favor on the younger brother's sacrifice, but did not accept Cain's sacrifice in Genesis mm-hmm. chapter four. Again, Old Testament, Esau envied his brother Jacob because of the blessing his father J- Isaac had given to him. Rachel envied her sister because Leah gave birth to Jacob's son while Rachel remained childless. 
Saul envied David for his success in battle and popularity among the people. Saul's killed the, what is it? Saul's thousands kills and David. Thousands, but David kills his 10,000s. Tens of thousands. And he yeah. wanted to kill David because of it. And then, you ready for this? The Jewish leaders had arrested Jesus because they were literally seized with envy Mm. because they were losing their power and their control. So when you see all these different accounts in the Old Testament and and even some in the New Testament as well, you see envy makes people do the exact opposite of what they know that they ought to do, Mm -hmm. right? And so when we apply that into our lives a little bit, we can take what we read. We're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, study church history a little bit, study your Israel history a little bit to see that envy caused these people to literally do the complete opposite of what they knew what God wanted them to do. And what happened to most of these people, their lives were destroyed because of it. Now Esau and Jacob were able to make up and it says, you know, Rachel envied her sister because Leah gave birth. I think we could also add in there. And I don't know why I didn't, but Leah also um, envied Rachel, because it was Abraham's favorite. Right, I don't know. Or, I'm well, sorry, um, um, Jacob's Isaac's, favorite. Isaac's. Isaac, Isaac's favorite. Wow, yeah. we're getting we're, we're really good with our no, our J- Old Testament. Jacob's stuff. favorite. Jacob, right? Because Isaac was Jacob yeah, and Esau, yeah, yeah. and then Jacob, Jacob's wow, wives were yeah. Leah, <laughs> were Leah and Rachel, and and literally, remember what Leah? What 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 was the 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 baby that Leah had, and she named her? I keep saying Leah, wasn't, like Leah but wasn't it isn't Leah? Leah, wasn't Leah it and Rachel. Uh, well, yes, Reuben, but she named one of her kids like a really bad name because like out of sorrow. It's yeah, something I about thought, sorrow. I thought it was Reuben, though. Like she kept popping out these babies for, for stupid Jacob, and then was, he I kept, know. you know, yeah, rejecting her, and he goes, I must have more babies and more babies and more babies and just keep popping, 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 but it never got Jacob's attention because he loved Rachel. And so when you look at some of these Old Testament people, envy literally can destroy your life and it causes people to make poor choices that they end up regretting potentially the rest of their life while you're looking that out too one last thing that envy also can do to us is envy can take away your joy in life proverbs 14 30 says a tranquil heart is life to the body but jealousy is rottenness to the bones and what is what does rotten do like what happens when something's rot like when it, when you when something rots, decays. It decays. It falls that, apart. Yeah. It just disintegrates. Like you think, like you know, I've been watching a lot of Good Bones. Wow. I love me some Good Bones on HGTV because right here in Indiana, down in Indianapolis. So I'm like, oh, I know where that's at. It's a whole lot of fun. So I've been watching that with the kids because they enjoy it too. But they go into these houses and literally, there's so much rotten mm-hmm. wood that they're dealing with. There's sort there's there's floors that are sagging. The roof lines are caving in because it's rotting from the inside mm-hmm. right. out. And if you know, if envy doesn't go unchecked, we can be like these houses that just rot from the inside out to the point that eventually you become like what's what's the an, an old cantankerous person that no one wants to be around and you're just always grumpy, a, a and, crotchety old person. There, that's what I'm looking for, a crotchety old person, or just someone who like I don't really want to be around that person because they just complain all the time. They want all these different grouchy. things, grouchy, and, and they're just grouchy. Yeah. And so, if that takes away your joy and people, and you're showcasing people that you have no joy in life, that could separate you from other people. It makes you make really poor choices mm-hmm. that can end up screwing up your entire life. And even at the end of that, it's something that we are able though to put away because it says that we need to stop it. We, we need to kill it. We need to put it to the cross and nail it because it is a work of the flesh. So mm. when we look at what the Bible has to say about envy, it says a lot of stuff about the fact of, and the, the funny thing about envy is um, I, I will say this um, envy Yes, may not affect other people, but as we can see from the Old Testament people and our own personal life experiences, Mm -hmm. people's envy can end up destroying and hurting other people's life too. Mm -hmm. Like Cain killed Abel. Mm -hmm. Rachel and Leah never had a great relationship. Jacob and Esau were separated even though they were twins. I mean, think about twins. Mm -hmm. Like twins are normally inseparable. Envy split them right down the the pike. Saul and David, they were split. Um Joshua and Aiken, I mean, or Aiken and his wife, like the the the, the right. serious situation that happened there. Yeah. So yes, uh, it can affect other people, but when we think about what envy actually does, is it according to the Bible, it kind of plants a seed in your heart of just being uncontent and mm. discontent with what you have, mm-hmm. and always wanting more and always chasing the dream and and hustling harder and going bigger, and sometimes to get those promotions and to get what we want out of life we have to sacrifice things on the altar of our envy. Like I have friends who have lost their marriages and their families because of a business goal that they're trying to reach. They're Mm -hmm. so focused on money and just making, you know, literally making 
I mean, that, the they, next they, dollar they make millions. Don't get me sure. wrong, but they lose. They sacrifice their family on the altar of that. You see other people who sacrifice friendships because it just sows discord among people. You mm-hmm. see churches that literally church members hate each other. Basically, even though they're members of the same church because of being envious about certain things. So right. when envy places its hold in that jealousy and that covetousness plays a hold on our heart, it actually starts to rot us out from from the inside out. Mm-hmm. So before I move on, any thoughts you got, big guy? No, man, I'm just enjoying the ride. All right, man, so here's the question, okay? So I think we're all in agreement. I hope I hope we're all in agreement that envy is not good. Envy is bad. It really is one of the seven deadly sins because it can affect your relationship with others, but it also can destroy you. So the question that I have for us to talk about today is simply this. What can we do to combat envy? I have a whole lot of scripture passages here. Sure. But so here's my question. Do you want me to read the scripture passage? Yeah, or do you yeah, want to talk yeah. About it no, let's 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 read your scriptures and then let's get into it. Okay, get some questions. Okay, here we go. So, how do we combat envy according to the Bible? All right. So, First Corinthians thirteen four, the good old love chapter. It says this: Love suffers long and is kind. Love doesn't envy. Love does not parade itself. Love is not puffed up. First Peter two one says: Rid yourself of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Rid it. Rid yourself of it. James 13, oh, sorry, James 3, 14 through 18 says, repent of it and call it like it is. Here you go. Who among you is wise and understanding? By his good conduct, he should uh, he should show that his works are done in gentleness that comes from wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your heart, don't boast and deny the truth. I love how it says, don't boast mm-hmm. and deny the truth. Don't lie about it. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For Strong where words. there is envy and selfish ambition, there is disorder and every evil practice. But wisdom from above is first pure, then peace loving, gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruits, unwavering without pretense. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in uh, is sown in peace mm. by those who cultivate it. Hebrews 13, 5 says, let your conduct uh, be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has also said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Mm. Colossians 3, 12 through 15 says, therefore, as God's chosen ones, holy and dearly loved, put on compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving another if anyone has a grievance against you. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you are also to forgive. Above all, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity, and let the peace of Christ, to which you are called, or which you are also called in one body, rule your hearts and be thankful. Matthew 6, 25 through 34 says, Therefore I tell you, don't worry about this life, what you will eat or what you'll drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Isn't life more than food and more than and body more than just for clothing? Consider the birds of the sky. They don't sow or reap or gather in barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you worth more than they? Can any of you add one moment to his lifespan by worrying? And why do you worry about clothes? Observe how the wildflowers of the field grow. They don't labor, spin, thread. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all of his splendor was adored like one of these flowers. If that's how God clothes the grass of the fields, which is here today and then thrown in the furnace tomorrow, won't he do so much more for you, you of little faith? So don't worry saying, oh, what will we eat or what will we drink or what will we wear? For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. But... Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be provided for you. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow, because tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has troubles of its own. And then last, Galatians 5, you know, when we talk about where envy comes from, and when we first, first we read up in this whole thing with Galatians 5, 19 through 21, Galatians 5, 22 through 25 follows that up with this. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such, there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and its desires. And if we live by the Spirit, let us also walk in 
the spirit. So, Fuller, when we read all these passages, that was like seven passages, mm-hmm, man, mm-hmm. and um, my vision was going blurry there reading so much off my iPad. But when we have all these passages, and someone's like, okay, so, Mark, Fuller, you know what? Man, I, I, I am dealing with envy in my life. I see what mm. other people have, and I want them. I see the privileges other people have, and I desire that. I see the houses they have. I see the clothes they wear, the cars they drive, the phones they have, the technology that they have, the, the reputation and the Um, the accolades and the awards and the notoriety that these people have, how do I combat that? Because let's be honest, evil, or not evil, envy kind of just kind of creeps up and it's a natural, sometimes guttural reaction we have to sometimes Mm -hmm. when we see these things. So after reading all these passages plus personal experience, how do we combat envy in our lives? Mm. And I'm going to stop talking because my throat hurts. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know, I would say... That first, you have to ask yourself why you desire these things. And be honest with yourself, right? Because anybody can go, I don't really want to be a basketball star like LeBron James because with all that money, I could do a lot of good things like give money to the poor. But is that the real reason why you'd want to do it? Or was it would it be for the fame? I mean, there is that right? reality of like, oh, if you're not you know giving to the poor now, what makes you think you're going to give to the poor when you got billions? Well, you know? so it goes back to the, I think, of the parable with the talents, right? If God gives you a little and you don't mm. do anything with that little of talents, why would he give you more talents? when Faithful you're gonna, and little, yeah, faithful, much type exactly. situation. So, um, you know, the, the first thing I would do is if you are struggling with that, ask yourself the question, why? And then from there, depending on what your answer is with that, I think it, it leads into a few other things of, um, is this for me or is this for furthering the kingdom? And if it's for furthering the kingdom, does it have to be done in this way? Um, these are the questions. I, if it's for me, then I would say, all right, um, why do I desire it? <laughs> if it's for me, why do I desire it? Okay. And is there a, a deeper underlying root uh, under the just the envy, right? Is it is it a pride thing? Is it a, hey, I want the pat on the back. I want the recognition. Is it So what? what is it? What, what's and, and driving it? And I will say, it? you know, I much of love the ending. I mean, some people don't love it. You, you, you I, I lost my word, but, but kind of like that's, that's one thing I do enjoy about the Enneagram. I won't go into it too much, but when, when you learn what makes you, what, what, what the motivating factors are behind your actions, sometimes that can show up because all of us have different motivating factors in some regards. Like for me, I like notoriety. I like the spotlight. I mm-hmm. like the pat on the back, mm-hmm. but I know some people don't give a rip about that. Sure. You know? And so I know like for me, when it comes to envy, I can get stage presence envy. Like I remember back in high school, man, you know, I never expected to get what we call the blue gold award, which is basically like the cougar award, Mm -hmm. like, like, or the top Escalon award in the sports program. Mm -hmm. I didn't expect to get that in basketball, but I remember man, senior year soccer, I put a lot of blood, sweat and tear over four years. You know, we were a lockdown defense. We were fantastic. I led my crew, you know, multiple state championships, multiple all all states, all these different things. And at the end of the ceremony, I I I knew I had a shot to win the Blue Gold Award, but I wasn't sure if I was going to get it or not. But, you know, the coach said, you know, we would have not have won all these games that we did if it was not for this player and he wins the Blue Gold Award. It was, it was, it was our offensive striker, one of the best soccer high school players I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. But that hurt because I'm like, what are you saying about me then? Mm. So are you saying that because I was on the team, y- y'all didn't need me? Like, like I, I wanted that award to literally prove to myself that I was good enough, mm-hmm. that I was better than all these mm-hmm. fools, that, that you know, you could not have won without me. Sure, we, we needed to score goals to win, but if we let all these other people score goals, mm-hmm. what do you think is going to happen? And, like, I, yeah. like I, I sure I was not a great soccer player, but sure. I, was a, I, I led my defense to be a good defense. Sure. And, you know, I had to deal with an envy. I'm talking years, bro. Mm. Uh, and, yeah, so, and I dealt with it senior trip, man. I had a lot of good conversations with, with Tanner about that because I remember one of the workshops was talking about envy and how it can destroy your life, especially if you're dealing with unresolved envy and tension in your own heart. And then when you graduate and sometimes you, I mean, I mean, I, I've barely seen any of my graduating class. Mm-hmm. We were only 16. I think I've seen mm-hmm. a couple of them since graduating high school. Mm-hmm here or there it's like if 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 me and the other kid didn't actually have this conversation rectify a little bit i could still be carrying that for 
ever because I'd never see him again, mm -hmm. you know? And, and I don't harbor that in my heart anymore. I mean, it's still kind of like, man, it would have been really dope to get that. But really, what what was the what was the point so, except yeah, my own pride, you know? Well, so I was going to say, what's the underlying thing for envy, right? It goes back to why, pride why does it Why does it not destroy the other person, but it destroys the person who's having the envy? Because there's an underlying issue, right? Right. And, and kind of like bitterness, and, where, you know, bitterness only destroys you, and the other person 100%. just lives on their life doing whatever they want to do. And don't even know about it most right. of the time. So it comes back to there's a problem within me, right? There's a sin that I'm holding on to more than likely. Mm -hmm. when, there, when I'm being envious, that is a sin, as we just saw, but there's an underlying sin issue, right? And it's, listen, we've all got sin. It's not something that I'm going to be like, oh, well, you've got this, you envy, shame on you, or you've got the underlying issue that I always lead back to with, with most people that are envious. Most people have a pride thing, right? I want to, mm -hmm. I want to drive that fancy car because people look at me and it'll, it's all about the me attitude. Yep. I call it the, the me too, too movement. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, you know, toot toot, like toot your own horn. Toot toot, toot me toot toot. Um, but it, it comes back to like in that instance, that, that story you just shared with us, you know, I would say, okay, so what was, what, why were you so bothered by it? And you already said it. You said pride. You know, I was prideful about it. And so that's, that's what well, I'm talking and, about. And, and I, I mean, you know, I'm also one of those guys where I live for the confirmation, you sure. know, the fact of you, and, and this is one thing that I know I got to keep in focus too about with, with being a Christian is at the end of the day. I remember one person uh, commented on something that I posted in the Facebook group that was super cool is the fact of, you know, you might not get a reward right now, but you're going to get it one day when you, you hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. Because that's what I wanted to hear. I sure. want to hear, you crushed it this season. We could not have done it without you. Thank you. You want the same thing that I've I've grown up all my life wanting, and that's affirmation. Affirmation, yep. And that's the thing. words of affirmation right? are huge for me. So we had two different reasons why, right? Your reason why was probably you didn't get a lot of affirmation from your dad well, before he, was, he passed away. Well, like he was dead. So for me, my dad was abusive, and I never got that affirmation. So we both have father lacking affirmation because of different reasons, but the same problem that still exists is we desire that, that affirmation from people, men, especially wiser men. Um, and, and so it's like, hey, we're fighting towards that. We want that pat on the back, that affirmation saying, hey, you guys Attaboy. did a good job. I want the attaboy. Yeah, and so it, it is something that, you know, for me, the more I, I think about it, and I constantly have to keep it in the forethought of my mind to keep myself from trying to become prideful or envious or these types of things. It's something that I have to battle on a daily basis to be like, nope, I need to recognize that right now, now I'm having this thought mm -hmm. or wanting to do this thing because I'm wanting the affirmation to get a little pride pat on the back here. And, and I don't need to do it for that reason. Cause that's not the right reason to do that thing, whatever X, Y, Z. So, yeah. so I guess, you know, and this is a, a couple of questions that I wrote down just cause I'm, sure. I'm curious about it too. And it's something I would love for us to flesh out a little bit, but yeah. is wanting a better life, a bad thing? You know, like I, I listen to a lot of Dave Ramsey and, and they talk about people who are trying to get out of debt. Let's get debt free. Which side note, did you see that, uh, the Supreme Court shut down, like slammed down Biden's bill about yep. loan forgiveness. Thank so, goodness. And, and, and I know there's a lot of people who are like, man, that's going to hurt because now i got to figure this out. And, you know, listen to Dave Ramsey, get on a budget, let's go. But, you know. Envelope method. Envelope method, seriously. But, you know, the fact of, is it a bad thing to want a better life for your wife, for your kids? Is it bad to want these things? Like even in the, in the SEAL team movie, the guy's trying to figure out, okay, he wants to not get out, but he goes, he has two different career paths. One is more on the field. One is more behind a desk, but this one pays better. And he goes, I can give my wife the, not, 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 a, not, not this glamorous multi-million. He's still in the military. He's not gonna make it that sure. much, but he goes, I can finally give my wife the house that she's always wanted and has sacrificed for our family mm -hmm. for, I can finally give my kids the education that they want. I can finally do this. And you know, people who come out of very rough impoverished backgrounds. We love those stories of mm -hmm. the people who hit the pavement, they grinded, they they did what they got to do. They're trying to set up their family for the next the next generation of success and success, mm -hmm. which Proverbs talks about that. They say if you don't leave anything to your kids, you know, 
Shame on you. And then how do you reckon that, that with the don't don't store up your treasures here on earth, store up your treasures in heaven? You know, so there, right. there's and, a, and that's there's what a I'm line, saying. right? Like, you, how, how do we balance the, yeah. how, is it bad to want a better life? And, and not just in such a way where it's like, I want to live that life. I want to live that influencer lifestyle. I want yeah. to live that New York sure. downtown. I want to make it. I want to be grinding in San Francisco. I want to be doing this in the big cities. So I want to make it. So I would say you know. it all depends on your motivation, right? It comes back to the heart. It's the same thing Christ preached during his earthly ministry, right? It's always about the heart, and this is where it gets back. Is it wrong to be, uh, rather than saying a better life, I would say a good steward, right? Okay. With, with what you're given, is it bad to want to be a, a, a good steward so you can be given more responsibility to be a good steward, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think it's bad with that context in mind of, hey, it's not for I want more for me or for what I think is best for my family. And, and but even going I want back it to for that, whatever God would have me. And, and for that it. talent, so going back to what you said, mm-hmm. you know, the, 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 the managers were not slammed for doubling what they had. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? As no. a fact, they were blessed because they were like, I gave you this, you doubled it, y'all, good for you. And the person that right. buried it where it's like, I, I, I knew you were a scary dictator. I or not a dictator. I knew you were a, a harsh judge, and sure. I didn't want to lose it, so here you go. Right. So they, they, kept safe. they buried it because of fear and because they didn't want to lose it, right? Mm-hmm. So um, I, I, think, I think there's a balance here. I think that wanting to do good, wanting to, to have more comes with a caveat, right, mm-hmm. of why do you want more and what are you going to do with the more? That would be the, the caveat questions I would ask. Because in all things, whether you're you got a dollar to your name or a trillion dollars to your name, we're called to be good stewards and we're supposed to be doing certain things with with these gifts that God has given us. Because really, ultimately, God owns it. It's God's money. Mm-hmm. It's God's house. It's God's family. Right, we're just managing what we got. It, even even down to our families, our wife and our kids, right? It that is that those are gifts from God. Those are God's that we are just stewards over, right? And so we have to be good stewards, which is why I think that, no, we shouldn't just be like, ah, screw it, I'll go and, and do whatever. You know, I, I won't work. I'll, I'll just sit here and not do anything. And Well, it's like that Aesop fable of the guy who, like, went out and did everything for everybody else. Right. But then he came back home, and, it, it's, I mean, well, everything I of, was just in disarray. I think of, like, Billy Sunday, right? Billy Sunday mm, was out okay. preaching on the, on the on the circuit all the time and never took care of his own family at home. So he's out preaching the message of God to everybody, except for he's not being the the priest of his own home. Right, and I think... And, uh, and ministering to his own like kids. like Charles Wesley or, or John Wesley, like, their wives were, like, super bitter... Because yep. of it. But then you also have people who are like Spurgeon, whose wife, I mean, my wife, my Beth and I were just talking about it. She was an invalid for a while because sure. of the crazy complicated sure. medical complications. They still right. had two kids, but he loved the tar out of his wife. Right. And still, but and he still had an amazing ministry, just but, as more powerful than some of these other guys. And that's why it's hard to throw a blanket statement of like, you can't go anywhere, you can't run the circuit. It's, it all depends on each individual scenario, right? Mm-hmm. And the people that are involved. And, um, you know, somebody like, Beth maybe wouldn't need you to be there every night home for dinner. To, you go out and preach the circuit. But for somebody like me, maybe Janiel would need me at home every night in that relationship context. So for me and for you as a husband, our 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 ministry in that area may look different. And I'm not saying that's true at all for either side. No, but, but there's different. But there are different bandwidths for but different this is, people. This and, is where yeah. we have to be good stewards of what God has given us in our family. We have to understand that. We have to understand our wives. We have to understand our kids' needs. We need to understand these needs and what do they need. And we have to say, all right, God, ultimately, like, like you read here in, in Matthew 6, right? He's the provider. Why mm-hmm. worry about tomorrow when he's the provider? He gives us the better life. He gives us the gifts, and he gives us the things that we need. Right, and I think there's a difference, though, between being wise with our finances and being sure. wise with our possessions because, you know, the, the guys with the talents, they had to do the work. They, had, I mean, No, no, no. Five talents don't become ten by and not I, grinding. And I don't see anywhere in Matthew 6 where he no, says no, sit and, around and, and not but, doing But I'm saying is the fact of, you know, this was talking about coming off of the heels of the passage of, or was it coming out afterwards? I think afterwards was the next passage where the fact of, uh, the guy, he had a massive barn, and he filled it with just stuff. And he had so much stuff that he built a second barn and right. filled that even more with stuff. And right. so I think the idea, A, has to do with is 
we can't, I mean, we can't put all of our own merit and weight on our finances because you right. never know what's going to happen. Sure. You know, money is volatile. Like sure. it, you never know what's going to happen, but it's more the fact of what are you actively pursuing and going after at all costs only because your envy of popularity, your envy of culture, your envy of fame, your envy of things. Like to be honest with you, you know, I struggle with this in some regards, you know, you know, the more, you know, I used to live off of a pastor salary, which was jack crap. And now, you know, I got adult monies. So I can do more things. And it's like, all of a sudden it's like, Ooh, if I really, like, I, I, we're not going to, but if I really wanted a Tesla to look cool to everybody, we could somehow figure out how to afford that. If we really sure. wanted to, we could afford the bigger house. And I'm not actually, no, we really couldn't. But like, if I wanted to, I could grind so hard to get that half a million dollar, sure. million dollar mansion, to get the cars, to get the equipment, to get the technology, to sure. do all these different things. But if it was just for my own personal pride and envy of what other people have, I can be forgetting what we already have. And, you know, the Bible talks about, we, we read it with the fact of one of the biggest, I would say, re, or one of the biggest ways we can battle envy is you know, learning how to be content with what we have. Mm. And honestly, I think social media shoots us in the foot so much more with that. And, and I'll be honest with you guys, if you guys are listening, if you guys deal, do struggle with people with envy on TikTok and Instagram and Facebook, you can delete the app. That's okay. You mm. can delete it because why would you ruin your own personal life, your own personal satisfaction, your own personal contentment with what God has blessed you with a steward over just for the fact of, no, I don't want to get rid of it because everybody's on TikTok. Everybody's on Instagram. If you're an alcoholic, don't keep buying the beer. Or don't even keep walking into the bar. <laughs> like, 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 like if you're, if you're, if, if you're, and that's the, like, that's rule number one is right. if you are in, you know, AA and you're trying to stop being an alcoholic, rule one is don't go to the bar and right. order a Coke. Right. Yeah. That's, you're, you know you're, what I mean? You're, you're already tempting. It's so, it's funny, Chris Cripe. You know who Chris Kripe is. Love no, me some Chris so, Kripe. so he's one of the the elders at our church, and he's been preaching through Romans right now, which has been phenomenal. But he said, look, he goes, when you're resisting sin and te- uh, the temptation of sin, he's like, I, I look at it like a piece of chocolate cake, right? It's like mm-hmm. if that chocolate, chocolate cake's cake. over there, and everybody's like, oh, that's chocolate cake. Oh, hey, I looks like some writing on there and they walk a little closer go I, well maybe it says happy happy oh let me get a little closer it's like oh happy birthday nope nope wait maybe it says congrats well let me get a little closer get a little closer congratulations oh 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 that smells good that chocolate cake and then you take a slice of chocolate cake and you're like oh yeah that's a good oh look at how pr- pretty that is on my plate oh oh look i'm just gonna smell it oh yeah oh and then you taste it and you've already sinned right and you're playing games he, now. Go, he goes the time to resist the temptation of the chocolate cake is when you first turn over and you go chocolate cake and then go nope and you walk away we're not saying say no to chocolate cake no i'm not saying that but it was a good analogy of uh, uh, that's the thing right is if you struggle with something the best time to resist it is at the very onset the very onset Right. So if you now struggle resist, now resist it at any point, like it's one of those sure. things where it's like, you know, oh, just screw it. We're already sinning. So whatever. It's kind of like, you know, Apostle Paul, when he says, should I keep sinning? So like grace may about kind of God like, forbid. Right. You know, yeah. and we talk with people where they're like, man, you know, I've already crossed lines. Uh, my, me and my girlfriend, we've already slept together. I mean, <laughs> we don't want to. So, and we're like, get out of the situation. Yeah. Stop living with the person. If you know, like, like we've, we've had these conversations with people. Like, this is real life stuff. Of, right. No, we're trying, but it's so hard just to to stay pure. And I'm like, yeah, because you taste of the heavenly gift. And now it's real hard because you keep putting yourself into stupid situations to do this. But you have to stop. Yeah. Have to stop. It's funny that you brought up that. Go full that, stop, man. That you brought up that scripture that, you know, should we continue to sin that grace may abound? And it says in some passages, God forbid, or absolutely not. And Chris Kripe said something about that, too. He said, uh, oh, where did he get it from? I don't remember if he got it from the Urban Dictionary. or He got it from something. I, I'm not, I, I don't know, a commentary. He got it from somewhere. Say full stop. But no, it says, uh, he goes, the, tr- the correct translation of this is basically, uh, stop right now, you big stupid baby. That's basically <laughs> what Paul's saying. And I'm like, I died laughing. When I, and that's really true, right? If you're in that sexual sin, stop now, you big stupid baby. Quit crying about it. Just stop it. it j- just stop. Just stop, you big stupid baby. <laughs> it was great. It was the best thing ever. <laughs> All right. So, so to get back yeah. into specifically dealing with envy, right? Sure. And so what can we do to battle 
ND. And, you know, to, to, to start putting some some practical application to this conversation, in one regards, I think what we're, we're really trying to say is the fact of don't put yourself into a place that's going to cause you to be envious. Mm-hmm. Now, you can't always control everything. Like, you can't just walk out of your house and be like, I ain't going to look at nobody because if I look at a single F-150 or an Audi or a this or a that, like, like you're going like, go to go to live Amish, your life. Amish community, that's what they've done. Like, like even right? between my house and your house, I got to drive through some really baller neighborhoods. Like, even though it's just right around the corner, like you keep going north a little bit. Oh, I know. I know. Granger, yeah. like, there's some nice houses sure. over there. Like, there's some, there is some real nice barn dominiums being built right in front of us. I look at them and I go, man, that's an expensive house. I know. <laughs> dude, dude, I was like, man, my first house was $700 a month mortgage. Yeah. And I want that again. Mine was five, I missed that. 562 and I loved it. I was I like, I'm missed the it. Best. I missed my old mortgage. Yep. And I bring it up and Beth always like just says, yeah, that was that was that was a lot of kids ago. So yeah, you know, well, we can't fit. That was that, uh, that was uh, a couple inflations ago too. <laughs> it's true. Anyways. It's true. We cashed in on it, but but you know, so it's the fact of you know, you can't just stop living. You can't just go Amish and pull yourself out of that right. environment. You're still got to be in the world. Of, you got to know what your I would say you got to know where your vulnerabilities are at. You got to understand yourself and your sin to know enough where it's like I get tempted when this happens, so I won't do this. When I'm like this, you know, and so if you're one of those like late night doom scrollers on Instagram and that's where you really struggle, whether it's with porn, whether it's with this topic with envy, you can make the choice to not do that. You know what I mean? Like that is an active choice for you not to do that. It's an active choice where you can delete or just unfollow these people on social media. You can choose to not put yourself in a certain position where you're constantly envious of other people. But then on the flip side, on the spirit. So, so, I mean, it does say in first Peter two, rid yourself, like choose to stop being like, you can choose to stop. Stop. Now you big stupid baby. There is the reality of, you know, once we are, we learn to be content with what we have and we learn to be thankful for what we have. I think that's where that transition comes in. Cause you know, at the end of Colossians three, where it talks about put on compassion, put on kindness, put on humility, gentleness, patience, bear with one another, forgive one another. It's saying, stop doing this, but instead put on all these different things. But at the end, what does it say? Be thankful. And the more thankful you are for what you have, the sooner you will leave wanting what everyone else has that you don't have. Because when you're thankful for your spouse and your kids and that you have a shelter and that you at least have a car that sometimes maybe turns on, maybe sometimes don't, but it turns on most of the time. You know, there's a lot of things that we can be content about. And there's, this is the thing that I I have to remind myself all the time in the business world. And, you know, there's so many secular coaches in my, my space that are not believers and there's always the next money plateau. Like there's always the break six figures in a year. Oh, break six figures in a month. Break six figures in a day. Um, that'd be wild. But, you know, there's always more and more and more chasing after money goals. Hustle hard, hustle hard, hustle hard. And what does the Bible say? The Bible says, no, no, no. You got to make sure you rest. You got to yep. make sure you take that Sabbath. You got to make sure that you are able to not put yourself in a place where you literally destroying everything you got because of what you want. Yeah. So basically what we're, we're saying is, is don't focus on what you don't have, focus on what you do have and be thankful because you can end up losing it. And I think that's what happens with envy is it's, you know, envy is the, the, the old ad, uh, the old adage of, you know, the grass is always greener on the other side because it's right over the septic thing. But in reality, you just got to water your own grass. You know what I mean? Like you could, and this is where I think we have to make sure we draw the line between it's not bad to look at somebody and be like, you know, I, I want that. Like I see their marriage and I want a marriage like that. Cause that's awesome. You know, the kids Mm -hmm. are doing great. They love each other. They're worshiping God. I want a marriage like that. But remember you're only seeing a snippet of time with that. No, no, no. I'm saying it in a good way. Like we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. So let's push on. But just think about it, right? Uh Just just think about it. You see them for a, a short period of their life, right? I see you and Beth for a very short period in the grand scheme of things, right? right. I, I see Scott and Laura in a short picture window of, of a very big scheme of life. So you could go, oh, I want that person. But how do you know their marriage isn't terrible outside of what you see? In the hidden part. Right. So don't always compare yourself is what I'm saying because mm. that's where the, the comparison is where you can start falling into envy. Don't don't compare. You don't need to compare. You can be like, I desire to have a good marriage. I desire for to have a good family, foundational, 
Christian household, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, I desire these things. Um, but just remember that that person that you're looking at next to you may have the same struggles or different struggles or more intense struggles than what you're having now. You don't know. And so don't look at somebody and compare yourself. Look to the Lord, right? Look to God and say, God, these are my desires. Lay them before his feet Yep. and, and give it to him. And and then rely on him, and then do your part, and stay away and from I think those that's things. What, that you and, that, and that's what I want to make sure we we end on is, and make sure you do your part. Surround yeah. yourself with good friends who will encourage you in the fruit of the spirit. Right. Like you know, if you see, see someone, buddies. If you if you see those people where it's like, if, if you want to learn how to start sharing your faith with people, hang out with people that share their faith. Right. You know, if you want to be somebody who loves really well, or forgives really well, or you know, just studies the scripture really well, you can look at them. Oh man, I'd love to be like those those, those dudes. I'd love to be like them. Th those ladies where they just they just seem to love Jesus and all these things. Well, go surround yourself with them. Yep. You know, and the fact of who you surround yourself most, you could end up becoming most like. So if right. you're surrounding yourselves. You know, I don't want to go too deep in this conversation, the whole unequally yoked conversation with spouses or dating or even friendships of if you surround yourself with people that are always wanting the next thing, always envious of these people, always pulling the mean girl stunts, always pulling the this, pulling the that, trying to hustle and grind, do all these, these things, try to, you know, legit, like hop on every single bit and doge coin that ever is out there just to mm -hmm. try to make more money, make more money, do more hustle, do more grind. You got to get up. You got to get up at 5 a.m. and start working till midnight. It's like, is, is that the life you want to live? Well, if you surround yourself with those people, Chances are you may end up falling into that trap. And so for us, that, that's where it talks about, you know, keep your eyes focused on Jesus, be a part of a body that wants to encourage us to walk together in love and in unity and in kindness, encourage one another in the fruit of the spirit. But we also have to choose to not just say, oh man, I'm just an envious person. It's just kind of how I'm wired, man. It's like, I'm no, a three wing two. I'm a three wing, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a three wing two boss. I just naturally get envy. Now my personal I know my personal bent is to get envious, so I need to be self-aware enough to right. know, like, oh, you know what? I struggle with this, and so maybe I shouldn't things. do that. Yep. So I need to choose to stay away because, you know, I could walk into a bar and not drink and be fine. Set up the safeguards. But friends of mine and friends of ours who are recovering alcoholics, why would they put themselves in that situation? Right. Why would they put themselves in that scenario? Right. You know, and so... It's one of those things where if we keep our eyes focused on Jesus, surround ourselves with people who want to encourage us in this regards, and then wake up every day, bear our cross, nail it to the cross, and say, Jesus, I'm going to live for you. You know, the same idea in, in the Lord's Prayer where it talks about, like, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, which means you're submitting yourself to God's will right. and what that means for your life rather than what you want for your own kingdom. Yep. All right, dude. Any other last thoughts before we land this plane? I got nothing, my all friend. Right, dude. Go well, for it. So I'm going to read a passage to end this 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 whole episode. All right. So it's a long one. I, I we need to have some nice reading music in season season five of long Bible verse passages. Have some nice little soft <laughs> serenading music. But I'm going to read the entire chapter of Psalm 37 because it's a beautiful psalm and it's a reminder that I need. So I'm sure other people need it as well. So here we go. Psalm 37, verse 1, do not be agitated by evildoers. Do not envy those who do wrong, for they wither quickly like grass and wilt like tender green plants. Trust in the Lord, do what is good, dwell in the land and live securely. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you your heart desires. Commit your ways to the Lord. Trust in him and he will act, making your righteousness shine like the dawn, your justice like the noonday. Be silent before the Lord and wait expectantly for him. Don't be agitated by the one who prospers in his ways, by the person who carries out evil plans. Refrain from anger and give up your rage. Do not be agitated. It could only bring harm, for evildoers will be destroyed. But those who put their hope in the Lord will inherit the land. A little while, and the, the wicked person will be no more. Though you will look for him, he won't be there. But the humble will inherit the land and will enjoy abundant prosperity. The wicked person schemes against the righteous and gnashes his teeth at him. The Lord laughs at him because he sees that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn the sword and strung the bow but uh, and to bring down the poor and needy and to slaughter those whose way is upright. Their swords will enter into their own hearts and their bows will be broken. The little that the righteous person has is better than the abundance of many wicked people. For the arms of the wicked will be broken, but the Lord supports the righteous. 
The Lord watches over all the blameless, or watches over the blameless all their days, and their inheritance will last forever. They will not be disgraced in times of adversity. They will be satisfied in days of hunger. But the wicked will perish. The Lord's enemies, like the glory of the pastures, will fade away. They will fade away like smoke. The wicked person borrows and doesn't repay, but the righteous one is gracious and giving. Those who are blessed by the Lord will inherit the land, and those cursed by him will be destroyed. A person's steps are established by the Lord, and he takes pleasure in his ways. Though he falls, he won't be overwhelmed because the Lord supports him with his hand. I have been young, and now I'm old, yet I have not seen the righteous abandon or his children begging for bread. He is always generous, always lending, and his children are a blessing. Turn away from evil, do what is good, and settle permanently for the Lord loves justice and he will not abandon his faithful ones. They are kept safe forever, but the children of the wicked will be destroyed. The righteous will inherit the land and dwell in it permanently. The mouths of the righteous utters wisdom. His tongue speaks what is just. The instruction of his God is in his heart. His steps do not falter. The wicked one lies in wait for the righteous and intends to kill him. The Lord will not leave him in the power of the wicked one or allow him to be condemned when he is judged. Wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he will exalt you to inherit the land. You will watch when the wicked are destroyed. I have seen a wicked, violent person, well-rooted like a flourish native tree. Then I passed by and noticed he was gone. I searched for him, but he could not be found. Watch the blameless and observe the upright, for the person of God, or the person of peace, will have a future. But transgressors will all be eliminated. The future of the wicked will be destroyed. The salvation of righteousness is from the Lord. Their refuge in time of distress. The Lord helps and delivers them. He will deliver them from the wicked, and He will save them because they take refuge in Him. Time for fun facts with February. <laughs> uh yeah boss i lied that that was gonna be a quick intro <laughs> <laughs> hour good, and 20 minutes later guys yeah. here we are finally at the fun fact so far let's end this conversation on a fun note my guy what you got for us did you know that loofahs are vegetables oh, actually i did because of instagram <laughs> if you look at a loofah you might think it came from a dried sea creature however this scrubbing sponge is actually made from a vegetable loofahs are made from the fibrous flesh of a mature loofah egabetica or whatever the heck that is just be just yeah be yeah and and and, and the l gourd <laughs> l gourd <laughs> yeah it's a cicladrica gourd uh they're distant relatives of melons and squash before reaching maturity loofah is also edible. So if it's a distant relative of a melon, can you like bathe yourself with a watermelon? <laughs> I mean, you can try. Just get a gourd, slice open a watermelon, uh, slice open uh, some, some butternut squash, just rub it over your body. So sp- some soap. So spaghetti squash. You know, I do have to say though, loofahs can hold some nasty germs, but at the same time, we got loofahs for the kids finally. Each one has their own color. It has made bath time go so much faster. Yep, we do the same thing. Goes, like with the little body washes go squirt, squirt, squirt. Each one of their things, and then they just loofah themselves up. You hose them down, and you get them out. <laughs> they got a fire hose. <laughs> I All mean, right, kids are done. So we have one of those detachable like like sure, uh, shower we, heads. Yeah, we do and too. It, it, we put it on the center blast, so that's not like this nice big shower. It's like no, like we hose them mug down, spray them like a fire. It's like when you take them outside after you're nasty, and your mom would just be like hose you off or whatever. But yeah. you ain't coming in my t- in my house looking all nasty like that. Yeah. You just. Psh- just send them off like that. I don't know how to, how to transition <laughs> out right, of this, well, man. Anyways, transition us. Guys, we appreciate you being here with us today for another episode. Episode 207. Dang. The Seven Deadly Sins. Uh, we appreciate each and every one of you for tuning in each week to listen to us. If you haven't already joined the Facebook group, head on over there right now and join us with the the chat. I guess not really the chat, but join the, com- join the conversations. Come in. Don't suck basically right <laughs> don't, don't make the don't, don't make the facebook group don't suck, make guys. The group suck and i do have to say there's so many of you guys there I'm, and, and we know your faces because your profile pictures and it's really confusing when it's you good. guys change them let's just be honest yeah. here and there's so many amazing people over there like uh we got jim we got john i know we got david i know we got <laughs> Liz, i know we got sabrina's break. yeah and sabrina not sabrina's peter james but, john andrew matthew Barth- <laughs> just jesus <laughs> i don't know but there's so many amazing people in that facebook group so make sure you join over there to keep the conversations going we're on all the other social media channels and youtube and make sure you don't forget to subscribe because you never know 
when we may just show up randomly live inside of our Facebook group or even on YouTube. That's right. We love you guys. Leave those reviews anywhere you can. But until next time, take it easy.